All right, my friends, so let's talk about deflation and it's, uh, and the, the impact that's going to have on our, on all of us. Uh, it's, it's not quite as simple as, Hey, uh, my dollar buys a dollar and two cents next year. Now my dollar buys a dollar four cents next year. That makes, I mean, that literally is what deflation is. Your dollar buys more in the future, but there's more to it. It's actually so hard to think about because inflation is what we're all trained to, to look at. Inflation, a continued declining value of the dollar. And the reason inflation is such a, why does this keep coming off? Come here, buddy. Pablo, come. Pablo. The reason inflation, oh, oh, stop, 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 stop. There we go. Why does that keep coming off? That's weird. The reason inflation is such a dastardly thing is because the governments benefit from it the most. The biggest people and entities in debt are the biggest beneficiaries of inflation because they borrow with today's dollars to buy a product, an asset, and they pay it back on a tomorrow's dollars, which are losing in value. The biggest uh, people lose from inflation are lenders. Because you lend money in today's dollars and you get money back in future dollars, which are worth less. And not only, Tom, not only on top has your inflation eaten away at the value of those dollars you're getting, you have to pay tax on the interest that you get as well. So this is why I never want to loan long term to the government because it's a sure bet to lose. It really is. At least in terms of any significant investment. Don't do that. Governments love inflation. They can borrow and borrow and borrow in today's dollars, spend. And again, the beneficiaries of inflation are always the people the closest to the government teat, if you will. So because they're the ones who know and get first dibs on that new dollar. So they get the newly created dollar. They get to spend that newly created dollar, which has a value uh, of today. And by the time you and I get it, it's lost the value because inflation has reduced the value of the dollar bill. Inflation, man, S rolls downhill from monetary spending, fiscal spending, and everything else. And so us peons, we're always the losers of inflation. Uh, now, the interesting thing is, so I was listening to this guy, Booth. I forgot his first name. John, John Wilkes Booth. I don't know, I can't remember. He was interviewed from uh, you know, that Real Vision folks. You know, those guys who, uh, I think it was a guy like Raul or something like that. This time it was actually a young guy interviewing him. And uh, he actually did a real good job. I was uh, quite impressed with his interviewing skills. I thought it was pretty good. Um, he asked, he said, look, so Booth is arguing inflation or deflation is coming. Um, it's actually here already. And this guy said, well, where is it? I mean, there is no deflation. And John Wilkes Booth said, look, dude, the governments, the world governments as a whole have spent $185 trillion in the last 20 or 25 years. I forgot exactly what he said. $185 trillion. And you know what they've got for it? An increase of GDP of like $45 trillion. That's it. So while there might not be any deflation on the books, i.e. my dollar uh, today can buy more than tomorrow than my dollar could because of deflation. He says 185 input of dollars to generate $45 trillion of output of dollars is deflationary. If we did not spend that kind of money, we'd be in deep deflation. And I'm somewhat paraphrasing, paraphrasing him, but you get the gist. And that's freaking crazy. I never thought about it like that. The amount of spending that these guys have done has, on, has only generated 20 cents on the dollar. Hey, what's going on, guys? 20 cents on the dollar. 
But think about it. If you invested a hundred dollars 20 years ago and you only got 20 bucks to show for it, you have to say it's a bad investment. So what John Wilkes Booth is saying is, you know, how many times can I keep going back to that well? Good question. I don't know. Scary. How many times can I keep going back to that well? To say we're going to spend 185 trillion only to generate 45 trillion dollars, and in fact, can they continue to generate 45 trillion dollars on that on each hundred? So it's no guarantee that 185 trillion will generate another 45 trillion dollars of growth. There's no guarantee. In fact, he is saying, "Look, man, the machines are coming anyway. AI, it's not just a freaking pick strawberry." It's, I mean, these guys, the AI that's out there, and I was just talked to a guy who knows this stuff pretty well, actually. And I used to work or at Amazon. He says, you don't understand. The guys who are creating AI are creating AI that can create its own AI. It's only a few years that the AI will be able to create its own AI that you don't even need somebody to create to begin with. And you, you think about it. <laughs> we think about AI machines artificial intelligence we think about the, the structure that they'll do all of our grunt work for us well they're going to be able to do all of our white collar work too who's going to do our jobs AI you'll have machines coming down to pick up your trash little machines that come down to pick up your trash machines they're going to draw up your uh, your legal documents I mean, all, never mind robo advisors all that stuff but just machines that do all this stuff which means people could be more and more out of work. Is that a bad thing? Not necessarily. There'll still be always be a place for creative in industries. But I'm just sitting there thinking, good boy. If AI is taking over the world, machines, that's going to drop the cost of labor so significantly that it's going to save us a boatload of money from a business perspective which means they won't need to charge nearly as much because the biggest cost of businesses are employees. I, and then you start thinking about it, like this guy was saying, he goes, look, think about it. This young guy has, has said this to this guy, I thought it was a great observation. He goes, you used to have to take pictures, take that roll of film, take it to CVS, have them develop it cost 30 bucks half the picture sucked you just throw them away anyway now you just do it on your phone and the pictures i just literally i've deleted the two videos i've done on this because i got interrupted twice just delete them how much does it cost me to develop you don't develop pictures anymore so what we used to spend money on pictures is gone how much do it used to cost us to have a landmine now you get a phone that's your entertainment. You know, soon there'll be no cable. You'll have high-speed internet. Yes, you'll have to pay for that, but you're not going to have phone. You're not going to have cable. You're going to have everything through this, this little thing right here, this phone. How much is that going to save you? That's deflationary. Now that's technology. You think the same thing is going to come for trash collecting? For freaking put shingles on your house? Draw up legal documents? I mean, it's already coming to recording. You, anyone can record a freaking demo in their, in their basement nowadays. You don't need some big, you don't need DATs anymore. You don't need any big structure, recording studios. I mean, just think about it. That's all deflationary. I mean, I mean the list can go on and on. Tell me what else you think could be deflationary out there. I mean, could there be freaking machines as lifeguards? Probably. I mean, well, that might not come tomorrow, but certainly that could come 15 years from now. Machines to mine minerals that we need? Yep. Why send a human being down there if you can get a freaking robot to do that? Machine, I mean, we got self-driving vehicles over the road anyway right now. We know that for a fact. Come on, buddy. Oh, hey, puppy. Come on, come on, Pablo. Come on, Pablo. Uh, you know, machines that we already, I've already, 
experimented once. I uh, emailed, I forgot who it was. I emailed somebody. I said, read these two articles. Which one do you think was written by a human being? Which one do you think was written by a machine? And he couldn't tell. We got machines that can write your, you know, your liberal New York Times propaganda. Uh, it's just, it's nuts to me. All this is deflationary. Then the ultimate deflationary is that we don't have work and we are the biggest cost expense of a business. I don't know what, I'm literally, I'm just thinking out loud here. What does that mean? What else could happen for deflate? I mean, obviously the price of your vehicles, you know, machines can put those together. I think they're already kind of doing it, aren't they? More so and more so, be less and less manual labor, less cost to create a, a vehicle. Now, there'll be more regulation for sure, but the regulation will be easily um, saved. The price of the regulation will be easily made up by the lack of labor. Firemen, uh, insurance adjusters, a drone goes up in the top of your building to see about your shingles that came off because of a storm. That's already happening. You, you don't even need somebody to go out in the field to see the damage that happened from a hailstorm, you send a drone over a place or even just Google Maps. I'd like to hear your thoughts. What else could be looking at deflationary things? So all this is deflationary. It's not just about the value of the dollar, but it would be. Things would cost less because they cost less to create. Labor is the co biggest cost of employment and then you got, in fact, another incentive of increasing minimum wage, increasing health care costs. you got these huge incentives to lower your employee, your full-time employees, your FTEs. Because they're a friggin' cost. And you say, look, man, I'll invest a billion dollars in a bunch of machines, robots, AI. I'll invest that today. And I'll, hell, I'll probably even borrow... And I'll be willing to pay a little bit of interest because I know the cost savings will be so extraordinary. It'll be incredibly profitable. Anyway. So you look at it from the, the structure of, I mean, just from just society as a whole. When machines take over and the prices go down of things, I, I, I just look at food production. The weeds will be zapped by machines. The picking of the, of the uh, crop will be done by machines. The laying of the seed will be done by machines. The watering was already done by machines, but still, you get the gist. All that stuff. The delivery to market over the road from freaking California with their whatever almonds to Maine will be done by machines. Yeah. The purchase will be done by machines. Simply because you won't need to go to a store. I mean, you could, but even that, you just you don't even need to talk to them. You just put it in your freaking cart after you had a chance to look at it and make sure it's a good product. And the cart rings you up right there. You don't even need to talk to anybody. It's tied to your freaking Fed crypto account, which is scary, but that's all that. But it won't even be stores. Why would they need to carry these big shops of huge inventory? It's all just in time delivery. You want some almonds? Let us know. Click. Machines take it all there. Uh, machines go out there to pick it. It'll deliver it to you via drone. I, I mean, look, man. This is coming. The machines are coming. And they're going to save us a lot of money. But they're also going to say, well, how do we generate money? I, I don't know. I don't know how that happens. I mean, obviously, there's going to have to be people who know how to fix drones. I get that. Obviously, there'll have to be some people who have to you know, steer the drones, all this. I guess. I'm not even sure how it's going to be the case. You think the machines who are creating AI won't be able to freaking <laughs> have that programmed? I'm not saying it's good or bad. I think it doesn't matter what I think. It just is. Anyway, let me hear your thoughts. All right, we'll see you.